I accept the fact that the neighbors saw me do the physical act. Would I have consciously and intentionally killed her? Absolutely not. In 1999, almost two years after Yarmula's murder. The stories that touch your life. This is 2020. 2020 producer Janice Tomlin and correspondent Connie Chung went to Arizona to cover the Philater story as Scott was awaiting trial. The kids wanted to visit their father, and that visit was set up. And we were allowed to be there for it. How are things going? I missed English and biology, but I think that's OK. And it was through glass. Oh. Quick. Okay. Love you, sweetheart. I can't imagine how difficult that was for them. I. We wanted to interview the kids because they were the other two people in that house. We wanted to see if they could shed any light at all on why what happened happened. After you went to bed at 9 o'clock, what was the next thing you remember? Waking up at around 1.30. Why did you wake up? A police officer came and woke me up. They were resigned to the fact that their mom was gone, but they were desperate to try to save their dad. I mean, that was the only parent they had left. Michael, are you aware of the fact that if your father is convicted of first-degree murder, that the prosecutor could ask for the death penalty? Mm, yeah. Have you prepared in your mind for that prospect? Mm, not really. I can't see my father killing my mother intentionally. That is not like my father. My father was not a violent person. They never argued. It doesn't jive with what I remember about my childhood. Do you love your wife? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I loved her a great deal. She was my best friend. If any two people were met for each other from the very beginning, it was those two. Scott Felater was born in the Chicago area. Scott was never much of a kid that went out on dates, but he saw Yarmula at school, in high school. Yarmula remembered that one of the things that first charmed her about Scott Felater was that he would fall asleep during English class, that he had a habit of dozing off during the middle of the day. And he decided that that's the one he liked, so he asked her to go out, and that was the first date for him, and he never went out with anybody else after that. In his entire it? life? No, he never did. I married her at age 20, and she's been there for me my entire adult life. They were both Catholic. They were both raised Catholics. And sometime before they married, Scott came across some missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and he converted to that church. Then she actually became a Mormon, and they certainly lived a Mormon existence with their family. In June of 1981, Scott and Yarmula started their family with daughter Megan, and three years later, Michael was born. She was an excellent mother real fantastically devoted to the kids. When our second was born, she gave up her career to be a stay-at-home mom. Scott Felater and Yarmula Felater moved to Phoenix because of his job. They became involved in the LDS community, which is fairly sizable here in Arizona. Scott Felater works as an engineer at Motorola, and he's a successful engineer. He's a product manager in charge of a computer chip. In the late 90s, Motorola is a telecommunications giant. They're the ones leading the way manufacturing those early flip phones. You spies should carry the Motorola StarTac cellular phone with fiber call alert. Yarmula never expressed any dissatisfaction with her marriage. And I would say, come on, Yarmula, there's got to be something that drives you nuts, you know? And she would just say, nope, he's just a really great guy. I had a father that worked hard and supported the family, and a stay-at-home mom who was always there when I came home from school. It was a very loving home.
One of the most popular places in Arizona to visit is Sedona, Arizona. It's beautiful with red rocks. The Filater family meet up with their extended family members from California in Sedona, Arizona, <laughs> and they take what's called a pink Jeep tour. Woohoo! See this drop off. Do you remember that trip, Michael? Yeah. Tell me about it. I remember me and Dad having a lot of fun, just like getting bounced around in the Jeep. Michael Filater described that day as one of the most fun days in his life. This just was weeks before his mother was murdered. This male next door threw his wife in the pool and now he's holding her down on the water. Scott and Yarmola's happy marriage and their happy family life shattered by a tragedy. It's a tragedy that the neighbor actually witnesses. You see it, thanks. And he tells his story to the jurors on the stand. He is grabbing hold of her head holding it under the water. The trial was a sensation. It drew an incredible amount of interest, not because of the crime itself, but because of Scott Filater's defense. There is a defense strategy that sounds at first like the plot of a science fiction movie. Not to sound flippant, but I kind of smirked. I'm like, are you kidding me? Sleepwalking? You do realize how unbelievable this defense oh, sounds. Of course I do. Of course I do. I sort of feel like an idiot sitting here talking about it, and I sure wouldn't be if I didn't think it was true. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.